Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And greeting. Good afternoon to all. And good good if, good morning from the one in the Pacific Coast because we know we have some of them there. So thank you again for thank you for accepting our invitation to this webinar title. What is to be done with distant education with today's presenter, Dr. Juan Tito Melendez. Thank you all for your valuable collaboration with this initiative that aims to provide special support to member institutions as part of HEAD's mission to promote the integration of technology into education. Today, we have more than 100 participants registered from more, from more than 15 education, uh, higher education institutions in Puerto Rico and another 15, 15 institutions in the US. Also, we have participants from organizations like Internet Society Puerto Rico chapter. Greetings to all. We hope that this webinar will be of great benefit to everyone. Before we start this webinar, we would like to share a few things uh, we, as we usually do. If, uh, for your convenience, closed captions are available in English for this webinar. To activate this feature, you just need to click the CC Live transcript, transcript button that you will find on the bottom of your Zoom screen. So please, if you need it, use it. Also, use the chat in the next slide to share your questions or comments. And remember to keep your microphone on mute to avoid any interruption since we are recording this webinar from the benefit of the one that couldn't uh, uh, connect alive. And remember that uh, also, uh, Use the link on the chat that Diane is uh, putting for us uh, to request your certificate of participation, or you can also use or scan the QR code in the next slide that you will find here. Uh, remember that this QR code will take you to a form that you need to fill out in order to uh, request your certificate. And please allow us one or two weeks to receive your certificate by email. At the end of, the, of this webinar, it's important also that uh, you uh, know that you will receive an email with the link to complete a short electronic evaluation to help us uh, receive your feedback for this webinar and help us also to identify which of the head services and initiative can support your students and also your faculty and administrators at your institutions and also uh, which head services uh, and how is the best way to promote these services among your students and colleagues, and also to you. Uh, remember that your feedback is very valuable to all, uh, to us, to heads, and this, uh, to fill out this uh, evaluation is around five minutes because it's, it's, it's in a SurveyMonkey platform and it's, uh, a, almost all of the questions are selected, a, a multiple selection. A, finally, we would like to invite us to invite you to spread the word and invite others to our next and last event of this semester. Remember that you just need to register at heads.org in the next and past events menu. And also uh, uh, help us uh, or follow us in social media because you will have all the information there. This special event is titled, in the next slide you will see the promotion, is titled Digital, Digital Equity Initiative at California State University San Bernardino. And the speakers for these events will be Dr. Samuel Sudakar, who is the Vice President of Information Technology and the CIO of this institution, and also Dr. Michaela Propescu, Professor of Digital Media at the same institution. This event is scheduled to be uh, offered on June 30th, 2023. And remember, it's very important to notice that the 9.30 a.m. to 10.35 is Pacific time or California time, and the Puerto Rico time or Eastern uh, Standard Time is 
from 12.30 to 1.45. Make sure you have the correct time zone to be able to connect on time and don't miss this special event. Also, we invite you to help us promote among your students and also your colleagues the access to the Peterson test prep and where you can find scholarships, practice tests and ebooks and download the ebooks to prepare for tests such as the PCAT, the LSAT, the GRE, NCAT and that among many others. And in the next slides, remember if you don't know the password, send us an email to info at org at heads org, excuse me, or you can text to my mobile, a mobile 787-616-3201. And please, when you text me, say the name of your institution so I can give you the correct password. In addition, you can access also the Peterson Career Prep to search for jobs and internships. Also use very neat uh, tools to create your resume or find career advice among many other services that this database have. And remember that the password is the same for both, uh, to access both tools, but if you don't have the passcode, eh, send us an email or text me with the name of your institution again. Now, eh, ah, also very important, remember to follow us on our social media accounts. You can find us at, at it's ORG, and we have a different social media like a Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and remember that all the recordings that we have of the webinars and different events that Heads offer are in our YouTube channel, Heads ORG, as well. Now, we are ready to start our webinar and would like to recognize the commitment of Dr. Juan Tito Melendez, who, although he is retired already, he accepted our invitation and dedicate time to record his presentation since he had an unexpected situation that didn't allow him to join us live, although he's trying to solve this situation and connect with us at the end of the webinar. But just in case we have the recording and we're gonna uh, share with you the recording, and we, uh, when he talked me, uh, called me yesterday with the situation he had, uh, we decided that we don't want to cancel or postpone this webinar because this topic is so important. And also we have already so many participants registered. So also at the, as a technology oriented organization, we decided to use the resources available to support this effort. Our head executive assistant, Isari Gutierrez, will be setting up the presentation recording while, while I am uh, reading a summary of the extensive experience and expertise of our guest speaker today, Dr. Juan Tito Melendez Alicea. He is a former professor at the University of Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras Campus, a member of the Systematic uh, Distant Education Advisory Board. Uh, Dr. Melendez started with technology in education in 1975 and with distant education in 1985 in a project with the University of Virgin Islands. Uh, he published his first, first, first article on distant education in 1990 and he also published a book on the subject in 1999 and has published uh, chapters in several Latin American books as well. Uh, Diane, we have uh, people on the waiting room. In 2014, in 2014, he was awarded by Universia for creating and facilitating the best mock in the Latin America. And in 2014, he was awarded uh, uh, and in that year also, he also co-edited the report for Virtual Educa, Distant and Virtual Education in Puerto Rico. He has presented on the topic of distant education in Argentina, Aruba, Barbados, Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, Dominican Republic, and also in countries like Indonesia, England, uh, England Mexico, Panama, Peru, Thailand, among others. And also Tito was a member of the Puerto Rican Society of Evaluators. 
Thank you, Isaris, for setting up the recording that we already have here. We appreciate your understanding and hope that you enjoy this presentation. Go ahead. Oh, I'm here to... Hey, can you loud the volume, please? We can possibly go with a distance to education. Um, I'm what... More, uh, Isaris, the volume. Okay since my retirement last year. So um, let's get on. Uh, I'm thinking it's necessary to give an introduction, to give context to the Perfect. points that will be discussed today. Mas, un poquito más. I'd like to give uh, some historical Perfect. perspectives, two different perspectives in terms of distance education. I'd like to discuss where we are now and discuss also where we should be going and finally get into a debate concerning some of the controversial topics that we're going to be discussing today. In terms of the introduction, um, the, the title of this presentation comes from a work by uh, Vladimir Lenin. Uh, Lenin was a Marxist, as you know, and he believed in the construction of a worker's state. And uh, he was concerned back in 1902 that he wasn't seeing that construction of a worker state. He wasn't seeing uh, the, the destruction of capitalism. He saw workers struggling, but he didn't get to see what was his dream, which was that socialist state. And so what he did was basically um, reorganize, rethink, and he saw it was necessary to construct a revolutionary organization, a vanguard organization, to lead the workers towards that construction of a socialist state and for the destruction of capitalism in, in his country. And uh, I think well, there are uh, some ideas that we can gather from this concerning uh, distance education. He had a dream, we have a dream. We have a dream in, in distance education of seeing a, a really good methodology that is really optimum in terms of learning for students. But for us to, to reach that dream, we also need to look at our history, where we've been, and to reorganize ourselves so that we can reach that dream. Which means we should look at distance education from a historical perspective. And if I look at technology and distance education in Puerto Rico, I can see that um, in the 1930s, when the radio came out as a technology in society, um, it had a great impact. And also we saw in the decade of the 1950s, how television came out and had an impact on our society, and how in the decade of the 90s, uh, the internet was developed and it had an impact on society. Curiously, as a, one of these landmark technologies developed, an educational use of these uh, technologies was also immediately implemented. For example, when radio came out in Puerto Rico in the 1930s, uh, and, and the, the Escuela del Aire, the, the School of the Airs uh, was created. Uh, when television came out in the decade of the 1950s, uh, immediately a television station was developed under the, the Department of Education of the time. Uh, to be involved in uh, educating students. And in the decade of the 90s, uh, we saw how the University of Puerto Rico immediately connected with the academic networks to be able to establish internet. And once the internet was established uh, in the universities, we began to see the rise of platforms such as WebCT and Course Info back in the 1990s. So what we see is, is that when you have some landmark technologies, immediately educators find a use for them. In my case, when, when I finished my degree in Albany State and I come to Puerto Rico, uh, the, the distance education 
that I was seeing was from Channel 40. And the professional organization that was uh, really pushing this uh, was ACTE, which belonged to the Association of Educational Communications and Technology. So Channel 40 was already, when I come to Puerto Rico, already practicing distance education. This was under the Anna G. Mendes University, and it was an extension program um, using television for, uh, as part of its program. Uh, curiously, in 1985, 10 years after my work with uh, with educational technology, uh, I get a visit from the University of the Virgin Islands, and they invite us to participate with them in the introduction of the internet uh, for distance education. And it was because the Macintosh uh, came out recently, and along with the Macintosh was a program called HyperCard. So what we saw is that immediately we were looking for a alternative type of distance education using the internet. In the in in 1990, I participate in the International Council of Distance Education's uh, World Conference in Venezuela, the first time it's held in Latin America, and I was really surprised when these organizations began to talk about national development. It really blew my mind because I was I was limited in my view of seeing distance education and structural technology uh, only in a small classroom environment. Didn't understand the implications until now of uh, using distance education to develop a country. And it, what, when, when you see this, you begin to see how small our vision was seeing um, uh, distance education so only within four walls and not be able to see it uh, really in, as, as, as a national project. Uh, from there, in, in 1992, uh, I go to the International Council of Distance Education's uh, World Conference in Thailand. And it was interesting because I was introduced to the first time, for the first time, to this concept of the industrial model of distance education. And by the industrial model, um, they were talking about how we should have division of labor as a different way of organizing distance education. And, and just to understand what this means uh, is that we're used to having this uh, a, an educational process where a teacher is constantly being asked to put on new hats, um, the, the, not only as a subject expert, but also as an instructional designer, as a technology expert, as an, as, as an expert in, in assessment, as an expert in communications. And so what we begin to see is that there's a different way of organizing ourselves as educators where we can have a division of labor. And, and this concept means that you have different experts and, and, and the persons with different expertise get together as a team to educate. And that's a whole different, that was a whole different concept for me. And, 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 it, and it broke my schemas in terms of how to educate. Um, and where are we now? Basically, I think we haven't moved that much in many instances. We still have a dominantly a, an individual, individualized craft mentality. We still have that teacher, that professor within four walls or, or with, with only one group at a time. Um, dealing by himself, basically, or with few people in his educational process. And, but at the same time, even though it's, it's, it's individualized in the sense of you have a person, an educator, working basically alone, at the same time, he's dealing with mass education in the sense that it, we, we, he's, he's projected or, he, or she's projecting a mass curriculum um, that really doesn't individualize because it's almost impossible to individualize one person with, say, 20, 25, or 30 students.
And, and the contradiction here is that on the other side, in terms of society, we're seeing a greater digitalization of, of the economy of society and we're seeing a more personalized production where you can actually personalize the car that you want to buy you can personalize the sneakers that you want to buy but you can't personalize the education that you want to participate in as a student and, and to illustrate this um, imagine a, a, uh, a doctor going into his or her office and having all the, his pa or her patients stand up and say, hey, I'm gonna give you two aspirins and I want you to come tomorrow. The patients will, will, will not tolerate this. They, they want an individualized treatment. And, but even though we may see this as ridiculous for a doctor to do, this is what educators do constantly when they walk into the classroom and they give the same content to everyone and then expect them to return for the next session. So there's a contradiction in terms of what people expect in, me in the medical field, but it's not contradictory to many to see this happening in the educational context. What, what this implies is that there, there's an, there has to be a new way for us to educate. And if anything is pointing the way towards a, towards a more individualized education, it's artificial intelligence. We have to bridge how we practice now education with what is expected in terms of, of the technologies that we have, especially with the introduction now of artificial, tech, of artificial intelligence. And I had a conversation with uh, ChatGPT uh, concerning this. And um, I asked ChatGPT, what's the current state of distance education? And what I, the response was is that this is, distance education is gaining more and more acceptance. Why? Be, well, one was the global pandemic. Uh, curiously enough, we as educators uh, weren't able to convince enough teachers and administrators to promote more distance education. Who did this was the great global pandemic. And we have now, because of that great pandemic, we have more technology and more access to technology so that we can now uh, advance the distance education. And another factor that uh, ChatGPT pointed out was that student demographics are changing also. Students are no longer studying full time uh, in, in our institutions. There's more part-time students or teachers who share their studies with their work and their families. So uh, this is, is, is creating a demand for more flexibility. And in terms of the challenges that ChatGPT presented was one, is that we have to ensure greater equality in access because we're not seeing that equality and that access equally distributed. And it, it, it also pointed out that there are concerns sir, uh, concerning quality and rigor that has to be addressed. And there are issues still in terms of accreditation that have to be addressed. And naturally, all this implies is new forms of training and support so that distance education can really be conducted well and effective. Um, so what must be done for this to, to, to take place? I continue my conversations with ChatGPT and uh, ChatGPT points out in terms of the future of education that I ask about. Um, G Chat GPT points out that people are asking for more personalized learning experience. The personalization of education has to be at the forefront. And because we have the technologies, we can have more virtual and augmented reality experiences with, with the students. So it can be more practical and it can be more uh, personalized for them to be able to understand the different concepts and skills that we want to develop. Naturally, we have the technology now for more collaborative learning, so we can really learn together and not against each other. 
naturally with the way uh, the way that 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 uh, our the work and society is advancing we need to have lifelong learning well implemented and and this is where the future of distance education is going because we really have to have people who are already working who have families continuing their learning for the rest of their lives and naturally all this implies greater flexibility and this is where distance education must focus itself in in terms of being more flexible so that more people can participate remember when when i mentioned the different um milestones technological milestones that we were seeing uh, in terms of, of, of education and how we, we found educational uses for them. Well, there's a new milestone that's out there, and that milestone is artificial intelligence. But we need leadership and able to, to carry out a, a really good educational practice with artificial intelligence. And, and I'm hoping that HETS can fulfill, can, can fill that void because we do need leadership to understand how we can incorporate artificial intelligence in the educational process. So if we have this dream in distance education of being more flexible, uh, of really, really being uh, useful in terms of lifelong learning, and and if we really want that dream to take to take shape we have to look at this history and we have to continually modify the way we we operate so that this dream can come true and definitely we can't ignore uh, artificial intelligence we have to be at the forefront to explain it and exploit it for the benefit of the educational process um, that we participate in this means this means that we have to abandon that uh, grocery store concept of of of, uh, of teacher support and and, um, and 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 teacher training. Um, the, the the grocery store concept is just lining up offers and having the uh, the professors or the teachers pick whatever they want. That, that's not going to work because many teachers, many professors are just going to pick what their preferences are without necessarily going towards the dream of being, or, they, they, they need organization, as Lenin pointed out. They need leadership to be able to reach the dream. And that means changing our mindset. We have to be much more strategic in terms of how we can really harness artificial intelligence for the benefit of distance education and to be able to do this with that leadership again i'm proposing the uh, heads can 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 really uh, be one of the leaders in this field because we as educators have to see this and we have to debate how to better implement um, artificial intel intelligence, not just uh, argue against it, we have to argue for it, but how to do it responsibly, that's the role that we have to play. And I imagine we're going to be debating this out, and so um, I'm, I'm willing to debate this out because I think it's an important issue that we have to understand for the betterment of uh, distance education. So let's begin the debate. Okay, hello again. We're in the second part of um, of this workshop, and we're in the middle of a debate. And I'd like to contribute a bit to to the debate. And if we look at the situation from the dream that we should have in distance education, there's a lot of different routes that we can take. A lot of alternatives that we can take. But the important thing is to have the dream, to take distance education somewhere which will benefit our students. Naturally, we'd have to look at the way we've been working, make our modifications to be able to reach that dream. There are people who think that 
just increasing the amount of courses that we have or increasing the amount of programs that we have in our institutions it is enough to bring uh, to bring distance education uh, to a different level and to me that's not enough it's not a question of quantity it's a question of quality and I think what we have to talk about is changing the way we run distance education and one of the big changes that we have to look at is lowering the cost of education we know that we're losing students because they don't have the money they don't have the funds to be able to study education is becoming increasingly expensive and we can't if we talk if we talk about social justice continue to let these costs rise in terms of higher education so what we have to look at is how to offer really high quality distance education, but at a lower cost. This, these are some of the obstacles that we have before us. These are some of the challenges that we have before us, but we're forced, we're really forced to look at this and try and tackle this so that distance education and technology and education, the, the whole education experience uh, can be enjoyed by, by a greater number of people. So to me, uh, increasing programs, increasing the amount of courses is not enough. We have to change the way we work. And this is something that we have to put on our agenda one of the ways to be able to deal naturally with the question of cost and at the same time increasing the quality of what we work is with the division of labor it's a question of understanding that we have the best people to do better things and that we need to reorganize ourselves in such a way so that we can increase our quality, but at the same time, increase the, the efficiency so that we can have a distance education at a lower cost. And one of the ways to lower cost is to just increase our reach. If we go global and we have a lot of people in, enjoying this, uh, this, this experience that we're offering, we're able to to lower our costs but it means having that global vision and that's something that not many institutions have and not many institutions have this global vision to be able to expand uh, the offering and lower the cost naturally uh, we have to watch out because we want at the same time even though we want to globalize we also want to have a more personalized experience the personalization of education the customization of education is increasingly important and we can do this we can do this if we tackle this the right way naturally if we have a lower cost and if we have a more personalized education I think we'd have the incredible product that we're all searching for in distance education naturally when we talk about personalization we're not talking about having experiences where it's only a one-to-one -one type of situation and that means increasing costs there are other ways to personalize and when we talk about personalization we can talk about and getting people together having it very social many times we associate personalized education with in in, in a totally isolated uh, environment and that's not the case we're not talking about isolating students what we're talking about is personalizing their educational experience and that's something we have to work towards and naturally one of the ways to do that is to have personalized or contracts with students that would clarify what their learning needs are and we can classify the resources they're going to be using to get 
to, to meet their goals, and naturally to submit the evidence of learning. And these learning contracts can be very, very individualized, but at the same time using the multiple resources that our institutions can offer. It's a different way of educating. It's a different way of meeting their needs and at the same time at a lower cost and with a more personalized experience. It's another way to do things. And we have to, we have, we have to think uh, ways of getting distance education to do this. That's the challenge. There's a challenge here that goes beyond just increasing course numbers and program numbers in our institutions. But the big but here is that we have to change the way we gather data. Because if we look at our institutions, we can identify where the student weaknesses are and where their strengths are. The problem is, is that we're not, we're not gathering this data. The way we organize ourselves as institutions, it does, does not promote the gathering and the classification and the use of this data to be able to create profiles where we can identify difficulties and strengths and work on them to be able to help the student meet their student goals. If we look at the transcripts, for example, which is what we submit as evidence of learning, um, many of these transcripts don't really tell us what the student knows. All we know is that a student may have gotten an A, a B, or a C in a course, but can we really tell what they learned from a transcript? We know, we know that's not the case. Nonetheless, we continue to do it. We continue with this tradition. So I think there is room for us to change. I think there is room for us to be able to say, hey, let's do things differently so that we can, we can meet the dream of distance education, which would be to have an offering which is more personalized and at a lower cost. These are some of the challenges that we have. These are some of the obstacles that we have before us, but we have to address them. And I hope that we can discuss how to address this better and how we can give a long-term process to solve these problems through HETS. I think HETS is an excellent vehicle to be able to address these issues and to give a follow-up to these issues. I guess we have here uh, topics that we can continue to discuss and hopefully we'll be initiating our discussions here and continuing with these discussions uh, in the future. Let's see what happens. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tito. I know you, that you're here. I guess let me make you a co-host so you can you can activate your audio let's see if you can do that all right i'm here i'm excellent. here excellent thank you so happy that you were able to make it thank you so much for taking your time to do this recording so we can you know in the meantime you saw uh, Bella, uh your situation we can definitely uh, comply uh, with the time of the webinar. We have right here almost 50 people that whoa, are connected. Whoa. So and we have from uh, from the U.S. institution, heads member institutions in the U.S. and also from Puerto Rico. Uh, so uh, I hope that everybody can hear well the 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 recording. And um, please, I will make sure to read the any comments, any question. This is the time since we have Tito here. Tito, anything that you may want to add uh, to uh, encourage our colleagues here to start this, this discussion since we have uh, 12 minutes to uh, to go. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad, I'm really glad to be here. And, um, and, and I'm really glad that we're in this historical moment where a milestone such as uh, artificial intelligence 
um, can be harnessed. Um, I'd like to hear uh, from the participants uh, how, at this present moment, how artificial intelligence is being discussed. Um, I, I've been talking to different people and it, it's up to now, it's been very individualized. There are certain people that are interested in the topic, but uh, in terms of uh, institutional um, institutional projects, uh, some sort of an institutional policy concerning this, um, I, I haven't seen it, I haven't heard about it, and I'm really interested if we have a lot of people here from different institutions to get a feel of, of what the possibilities are in the, in the very near future. I, I'd like to hear from people on this. Este, let me before, uh, because probably it's going to be easier if uh, the ah, participants okay. can activate yeah, the audio. Right. So right, Diane, right. if you could please allow participants to activate the audio, because so far since we were uh, sharing this recording, we right, right. Uh, disabled uh, okay. that feature, but right, right. probably since you want a, di a dialogue and it's difficult to write on mm -hmm. the chat. So anyone that may want to activate, Diane, let me know if you already were able to do that. Ya está. Yes. Ya está? Okay, perfect. So anyone that can share, a, you know, activate uh, their audio, uh, your audio, you can use the, ¿verdad? A, share your a, experience as Tito mentioned or request here before. Anyone? Don't be shy. Bueno, in, in the meantime, let me tell you that um, the recording you mentioned hits several times and you know that we have already talked about this and definitely this is a very important uh, time for design education and, and we are definitely willing to collaborate in any way possible that we may uh, uh, are capable of and I'm so happy to count on your collaboration, Tito, although you are already a, a retired. I know you you want to continue this uh, a conversation because it's crucial in order right, to right. transform right. education. Yeah. So uh, during next semester, we will continue talking about okay. this uh, uh, topic and not only talking, but also trying to figure it out ways that we can collaborate. Uh, right, right. I, I, tell you, I tell you, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally convinced this is a milestone. And I live through various milestones. Um, I've seen how distance education has jumped uh, because of these milestones. Uh, distance education, when it started out, it was correspondence education. The internet transformed distance education. And when you look at at, 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 for example, what happened with the with the platforms when, of course, I mentioned Course Info. Course Info was the predecessor of, of Blackboard, um, and and I remember when it when Course Info was battling it out with WebCT until uh, Course Info, which turned into Blackboard. Blackboard bought bought out uh, WebCT. Mm -hmm. And, and the platforms, which at one time were only in a few institutions, now they're in all the institutions. And many institutions give out spaces on their platforms now to all professors. You see these milestones in, in distance education. And, and you know that they provide new, they provide new ways and, and, and it elevates the possibilities that we have with distance education. And that's why now, with uh, artificial intelligence, that's the big milestone because it changes the rules in terms of how we work. Right now, professors are scared of using the, uh, of, of using uh, artificial intelligence because they're going to say, "Well, when I ask for a report, they just ask uh, Chat GPT to, 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 to whip it out." And and, and mm -hmm. it's more than that. It's much more. It's it. The artificial intelligence can't be seen as competitive to what we want to do with with students. We have to see artificial intelligence as mm -hmm. a an incredible an incredible asset to what we're doing with students. But it means re 
thinking the way we work. And so that's why I'm, 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 I'm really interested in, in having uh, different professors who are, who are progressive. I know there are professors that, that are really concerned about students. And, and what we have to do is prepare these students you know, for a new world that, that artificial intelligence is providing. And we don't have to be waiting for governments to have governmental policies concerning artificial intelligence. We can begin to experiment uh, with it and share our different experiences. And we're going to make mistakes. Sure, we made mistakes mm -hmm. with a lot of different milestones. But the idea is to learn from our mistakes, we share our mistakes, but also we share our positive experiences so that we can have a lot of people doing good things. And uh, yeah. definitely, definitely, uh, artificial intelligence is right now on the list in terms of a milestone. Let's not wait for other people to tell us what to do. We can be doing things. Thank you, Dito. And we already have people on the chat that wants to participate. For example, great, great. we have Milagros Varas. Milagros, do you want to use your audio? Go ahead. Yes. Good afternoon to everybody. I'm Dr. Mili Varas from Intermetro and welcome to everybody. Uh, by the way, we have to get recertified uh, at the beginning of August because our Blackboard is changing. And so everybody that teaches online has to get recertified those first two weeks. Mm -hmm. But I had, it's not a question, it's a comment. Uh, a month ago, I took, uh, it was more than a webinar. It was a seminar that was a two week seminar from, from Mexico, but it was in English. And it showed us different types of AI, like chat, GPT, and problem solving apps. And it was impressive because you can ask um, chat GPT in a minute to say, okay, write me a poem about Millie. And it's scary how it writes <laughs> Millie and not only writes Millie, it's like as it knows, as if it knows me. However, However, I'm a math professor and an economics professor, and I teach in English, and we're constricted by EducoSoft. EducoSoft is a very strict platform that has modules. And, I, I, and even if we have Respondus and we have Safe Assign, a, I, I can't tell when they're cheating. Honestly, I can't tell. I know they're cheating because if it takes me 25 minutes to do an exam, they can't do it in 19 minutes. But they could be using something hidden on Respondus Locked App Browser, and I can't tell. And I can't. I'm, and the next time when I warn them, well, they'll stay on the computer raising their heads up and down for an hour. And so, what do you do? How do you balance that? Good comment. Good comment. Yeah. The, <laughs> part of the challenge is the way we have to reorganize the way we work, definitely. Because it's not a question of saying, this is the way I teach and um, artificial intelligence doesn't fit in, therefore I will not use it. it that's, that's not the way to work it. Uh, it has to be totally different. I, we, we have to say we want to use artificial intelligence and how do I teach with it? How do I reorganize what I do? And that's the fascinating part of being an educator so, in this historical moment. So how do you do it when you're constricted by a program that has you stuck to 18 modules per semester, three partial exams, and a final exam. And you have no flexibility. I don't know if you know about EducoSoft, but we've been using it for 10 years now. And 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 I don't know, you know, it, it leaves us very little flexibility. Right. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that I think I think one of the things that I've been always pushing is that is that the platforms are just starting points. And as a starting point, we, we bring students to different places on the internet and, to, and to we, 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 we direct them to different resources. Um, it, it's, not a, it's not a question of being restricted totally to the use of the platform. And, and to me, that's one of the negative uses of, of a platform to restrict students instead of being a, a starting point to go throughout the world, uh, digital or physical. Um, we don't have a choice. Yeah, that's that's part of the institutional policies that we have to change, definitely. Uh, I agree with you 100%, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, 
and even if I try to make different changes, for example, I'm a Pentatonix fan and uh -huh. I try to put a song from them. That's about time, by the way, and measuring time. And uh -huh. I had a totally different exercise for them, but it was because now we're in semester and I had an extra week. We're not in trimester. So it gave me some free time to experiment, but still uh -huh. we're tied to the platform. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Th those are the famous, these are the famous battles that we have to have, definitely. And, and I think we need more discussion on this, more workshops on this to be able to, to overcome uh, these definitely. obstacles. It, you definitely have a big obstacle and we have mm -hmm. to find ways to get over that obstacle. Definitely, definitely. I, I, oh. I agree that, that you, the potential is there, but you have a big obstacle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, thank, that, you. Some, thank, thank you. Thank you. Depends on you. Milagros, if you want, uh, the, we also uh, disable uh, the, the video. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, no I'm in shorts. Fine? I'm in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know we are in summertime, so everybody is like relaxed. And, I'm in you know, shorts. <laughs> not a problem. Anyway, any other comments since we have two more minutes to go and we have here Dr. Juan Tito Melendez who was able to connect at the end as he uh, wanted to do it. And we are so glad he did because this conversation is very important. We know there is so many other uh, obstacles as mentioned, but uh, Paola, you, you want to say something? You can activate your video and audio. If you wanna share something, this is the moment. Go ahead. Now he's uh, able uh, to do it. You are able to do it, excuse me. Anyone? Let me check the, the chat in case, or you can use the chat and I will be more than happy to, to read the message to Tito since Tito is uh, only using video, uh, audio because he's on his phone. Uh, anyone else? Don't be shy, this is the time. Okay, so I'm gonna ask him another question, okay? Go ahead. Uh, okay, this is Dr. Radas again, Millie. Please call me Millie. And how do you try starting changing institutional policy, policy Dr. Melendez? Oh, that, that, excellent, excellent question. I think it's, <laughs> because I think because if that is my problem, right? How, right. how, how no, do no, we right, start? Right. How do we? Where do we mm -hmm. start? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I've been I've been dealing with uh, innovation for for decades now, and my argument has always been the crisis that education has now. Uh, we need students, uh, definitely. We need to yeah. lower costs, uh, definitely. <laughs> and, Good luck. And, <laughs> right. And, and if we can present alternatives and just to ask for experiments, uh, I, mm -hmm. I know institutions are incredibly uh, in structured and in incredibly rigid. And I've always asked for spaces to, to do my experiments. And, and luckily, I've, I've had the respect from my, my superiors to, to have this space to experiment with things. And what I do is once I have my experiments, I begin to, I begin to, to spread the word. And I'd have workshops and seminars on the stuff that I'm doing. And, and from there, there are always people who are enthused in terms of doing different things. It's the, it's the famous theory of innovation, Roger's theory of innovation. And you'll always find some people who are willing uh, to go with an innovation and you're gonna have people who stay behind. But uh, the idea is, is to do it. It's, it, it even mm -hmm. if you have to do it alone. And, and once you do it, you have, to, you have to let people know what you're doing and, and divulge it. You, you have to propagandize it. You have to let everyone know that these experiments are possible. And, and, from, and, and, and many times I've been just satisfied with my little experiments and having a few people with me, but my growth, I've, I've grown so much by doing these experiments and having these dialogues and having these debates and fights with my supervisors, definitely, <laughs> because, yeah, I remember. Trust when me, were, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I tried to have uh, classrooms in, in Second Life with virtual reality. Um, and I was told by the IT people that I was taking up too much bandwidth. No. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I mean, I've, had, <laughs> I've had fights galore with my institutions, definitely. But mm -hmm. I, I've enjoyed these fights because, you know, because it opens the doors for others, you know. 
and mm-hmm. uh, and, and so I just encourage you to to do your own little experiment, and from there let people know what you're doing, and 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 if you do this with enthusiasm and and you spread the word with enthusiasm, there'll always be people mm-hmm. to to really follow you, and if we do some really good experiments, so the idea, uh, do it, yeah, do it. I, 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 I'm I'm the energizer bunny, uh, the gringa. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, right. so don't worry. Thank you. That is it. <laughs> thank you, thank you again. Anyone else? Uh, Midalia Rosa say thank you on the chat. Remember before you go to uh, Dayan, if you put again the certificate link uh, form so they can re- request their certificate. Uh, please do so. Uh, remember to click there and, and submit your information. And again, any other question? Uh, since we have a few, uh, bueno, we already passed uh, uh, three minutes uh, from the uh, uh, ending time. Uh, but since this discussion is so important, we want to give a few mo- moments. If not, if we, if not, we don't have any other question, remember also that you can either click on the link that Diane just put on the chat to uh, complete the brief evaluation, or you can wait uh, and we will send that evaluation link through the email. But the certificate is important that you click uh, because it's, it's on the only way that we can Mela, send certificate of participation is that you submit your information when you are in the webinar. Please remember to allow us one to, from one to two weeks to receive the certificate. And Tito, any closing remarks before you go, since you were able to be here with us? We are so happy for that. Go uh, ahead. I, I'm, I'm just happy that we have this many people interested in, in just doing things differently. Um, it gives me hope, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when you fight a lot of battles and you lose a lot of battles, you know, you always win some. And just having people interested mm-hmm. in, in new ways of, of looking at things, I, I think that's so positive. And I, let's just give uh, some sort of, of, of support to all these that are mm-hmm. thinking differently so we can have, you know, a better educational experience for, for our students, definitely. You made me happy. You made me happy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And we are so happy to have you back uh, from your retirement to help us Bella, lead in this uh, discussion. Uh, thank you so much. Anyone, I think someone opened the mic. Uh, if you want to do some, some comment, that's the time. If not, we are ready to go. Uh, we have a lot of different uh, comments giving you thank you. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, and remember that the recording will be not only the recording of the webinar, but also if you want to go and see the recording one and recording two, is going to be there at the YouTube channel as well. And thank you so much. This time we are not going to share the presentation because the presentation was a video, eh, the recording. So eh, you will have, eh, you decide if you want to go either to see the whole recording with the final Q&A session or just click on the recordings. Thank you. Thank you again. Eh, today is Thursday, but tomorrow is Friday. So have a happy Happy long weekend because in Puerto Rico we celebrate next Monday the Jubilee. Jubine, I think it's the is the, the day that we are celebrating. So it's a long weekend. Uh, I don't know if in the state, but uh, again, it's gonna be a weekend. So enjoy the weekend. And Tito, thank you again. We hope you have a great flight to China and enjoy your trip. Um, I'm so happy that you were able to solve uh, your situation and, and you were able to join us at the end. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Isaris, for helping us with the uh, multimedia from the office. And thank you, Diane, for helping us uh, in the chat. Have a wonderful day and enjoy enjoy the, the rest of, of the day, tomorrow and the weekend. Bye-bye. Take care. Let me stop the recording. And we...